I'm Arya Schwartz along with Rachel Galligan, and welcome to the Windsider Show where it's all about the W. The Dallas Wings and Brian Ackler have split ways. What's in store for the Dallas Wings moving forward? show please consider joining our patreon community for less than a cup of coffee a month you can directly show support for the hard work we do covering the w and don't forget to see our staff's written content over at winsider.com that's winsider.com and don't forget patreon.com backslash winsider to subscribe for exclusive content and you know what i'll break it now we have winsider merch if you subscribe to patreon in the next day or so we will be releasing a an opportunity for Patreon subscribers to get first chance at Winsider merch with our logo and a cool couple designs that we've uh, put together thanks to the graphic god. Um, so yeah, you subscribe to our Patreon, you get exclusive content, and now you're getting exclusive opportunity to get Winsider merchandise before it hits the public market. Rachel, yesterday news broke that the Dallas Wings and Brian Agler were going to be parting ways. I think it it surprised some people throughout the WNBA world. I think part of that surprise has to be because of what this past season was, right? It was a bubble, a wobble. It was a different experience. Half the teams, so many of the teams didn't have their full roster due to health concerns, due to this or due to that, until midway through the season, which is not the most uncommon thing for the W. But there's a different feel about the season where, Going into the offseason, I kind of assumed that ownerships would look at this season in a different light and not be so hasty to pull the trigger on firing a coach. Clearly not the case, at least with Dallas and their ownership partner, part their ownership team, uh, and Greg Bibb, as Brian Agler is gone. Welcome to the show, Rachel. Now that the WMA season is a little bit behind us, we've been able to relax, kick our feet up, go to the spa for a few days. How are you doing? And then let's dive into the Dallas Wings. I'm doing really great. You know, just kind of in my mind, uh, switching gears to the college season and spending a lot of time with uh, the recruiting front of things. So I'm doing really, really well. Why don't, well, you know what? Break down. What do you do, Rachel? <laughs> Tell the people what you do when it's not WNBA season and you're dropping rage bombs left and right. I do. Well, I, my, I'm a business owner and I started my own recruiting service. It's called Go Global Recruiting. Um, it's essentially um, a membership service um, that's kind of for the college coaches. Um, they basically consult with me, and I help them identify players from different countries. Um, when I was a college coach, which I coached college basketball for about eight years. Uh, Off. What? <laughs> oh, no. Off. No, no, no. I thought you were coughing. I was like, what? Um no, I with a soft seat. Yeah, I, I recruited a lot of international players as well as domestic players, but um, it was a, a niche that I really enjoyed, and I um, wanted to help more young women all over the world on a bigger scale, um, and also help a lot of my former colleagues in the in the collegiate game um, be able to more effectively recruit overseas. So um, I'm kind of that bridge between the, the coaching staffs and the scholarship to the talent in different countries. So it's been very, really, really cool. Um, today is actually its birthday. So the timing of this is really perfect. <laughs> Happy birthday. Yeah. And, and congrats. How many years you got? It's uh, it's We're now entering year four. So that's wow. pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, I'm real proud of it, but anyway, yeah, it's, uh, it's gone really well, but you know, there's a lot that's changing, um, with the NCAA right now and this COVID-19, um, as, as we just heard yesterday, <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, the NCAA did decide to come back and basically, um, give all winter sport athletes an additional year of eligibility. So that kind of shakes. Up. Oh, that's, that's huge. I, I, not even going to pretend that I'm like shocked when I'm not going to pretend this is a pretend shock. I mean, that is huge. I did not know. that. It's huge. And, and to be, to be fully transparent, I didn't really expect it myself because I, I'm anticipating that we will get a full season in. 
um, you know, between, you know, 22 to 25 games, if not more, depending on how far you make it in the tournament. So um, it's a little strange, you know, we're going to have, we're, we're in a period of time where now you've got, you know, seniors who are now potentially just going to have five full um, seasons under their belt at the coll- collegiate game. You've got players, um, top players in the country who could decide to come back and play or they could go pro. Um, it's going to, so it's going to be really, really weird the the domino effect of this. And so just dealing with that on more of the international grassroots level and helping my kids understand what this means for them. Um, you know, it, we've been doing this since the beginning, since all of, all of this started back in March, but, um, yeah, so that's what I do. And, and recruiting never stops. It's always changing. It's always evolving. Um, it's not a black and white thing. It's, it, there's a lot of gray area in there in terms of how you, how you, um, you know, position yourself and how you get kids noticed, but I I love it. And I've been able to help some girls get to some really great situations and help some really, really great collegiate teams, um, find a player that can come in and really help their team. So, um, love it. I love it so much, but yeah, that's what I've been doing. Okay. Well, first of all, we're going to have to do a different episode sometime where we just talk about how you got into that, how you went from a player coach, (laughs) uh, overseas player coach, and then into uh, bringing the next wave of talent. But I'm curious for you. I, I'll, you know what? I'm not even going to put you on the hot seat. I'm going to I'm gonna give you my initial reaction to when the Dallas Wings announced that they'd be parting ways with Brian Agler. And we can kind of go from there. We got some bullet points. This is, this is as we typically do during the offseason, this is a more Windsider show uncut. We're not going to be editing things out. We're going to be speaking off the cuff. Just kind of speaking our mind on these topics because I, I think it's it's almost a disservice. Everyone tries to find out, you know, why did they break up? Why did this happen? Whatever. At the end of the day, Brian Agler is not the coach of the Dallas Wings. So if we're looking at this from a WNBA perspective, yes, if another opening if another coaching job opens up, obviously Agler's name is going to be up there for it. But Agler is kind of out of the picture now if we're talking about the WNBA and the teams and specifically the Dallas Wings and moving forward. So for me, When I heard this news, I'm thinking directly about the Wings and what this does to their growth process. Because let's be frank about it. This is a team that lost Skylar Diggins-Smith, lost Liz Cambage, has lost out on, I'll I'll throw Azra Stevens, I know it doesn't make sense, but I'll throw her into that. And a lot of other players where it was quite obvious that they wanted out of Dallas. And it's not been a new thing. I mean, it's been going on for a period of time. And at a certain point, I'm not here to throw shade. I'm just here to ask the questions. If you've let go of multiple coaches now, they've gone through two coaches in three years. They've lost the two biggest names to play on the Dallas Wings, uh, Tulsa Shock teams. Um, I'm not going to go back to the Houston Comet days. Um, But so for me, it's like looking at this, okay, there's been one constant and that's Greg Bibb, the one of the partial owners uh, or possibly majority owner. I'm not even going to look into that right now because it doesn't really matter. And GM. He's been a constant. So there's been a lot of questions put out there in the Twitter sphere and in the WNBA talking head spaces about him. And at what point does, you know, does his accountability come into question? That's not here or there right now. I think it's a legitimate question that needs to be asked and we can have a whole podcast on that. For me, I'm looking at this team and when my reaction to, and I just went on a four minute rant about this, but when I heard about Brian Agler and the Wings parting ways, my initial thought was this sets them back. I mean, Brian Agler is a self-declared, and, and, I, and I say this with all respect, a self-declared coach who's best at going to teams who are established in what they are, but they've been kind of spinning their wheels. And I'm literally stealing a quote from him. Like, spit, he, when he went to Seattle and won that championship, they were a good team that wasn't reaching their potential and had that high ceiling potential, and he was able to take them there. Same thing with LA. Um, and coming to Dallas, I don't know the negotiations. I don't know if he knew Liz and Skyler were all going to be gone uh, when he was coaching there. But the fact of the matter is, that, he went to that. yeah. What no, I can answer that he did not, and that and that's what makes this so, in my opinion. And sorry, I might snap for a second. I think it's a little bit ridiculous. I mean, yeah. you go hire, um, you know, one of the winningest coaches in the WNBA, who is a two-time champion. He comes in and he's not able to actually coach any of the players he thought he was taking over the job to be able to coach. You've had massive turnover 
basically since this entire franchise has existed in Dallas, you know, mm-hmm. and so I'm sitting here and I'm like, all right, well, at least now, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I just no, no, no. like, you know, okay, we, 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 Ag would just finished year two. Yes, it's a very young team, but we could see how this team was playing. In my mind, I was prepared to say, hey, I'm going to give the Dallas Wings the nod as a playoff team next year. Um, I see them really continuing to work up um, kind of that, those standings in the next few years. Were they a few years away from being like a, a true contender type of talk? Absolutely. But I thought they could make the playoffs next year and start working their way to one of those middle of the pack teams. But now... I'm sitting here like, okay, now we're just going to, it's like, it's like, what's the definition of crazy? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. You know, you, there, there's zero consistency with this franchise. So this move for me, although I can see where maybe Greg Bibb and Agler weren't eye to eye, and maybe that was just a difficult fit at times, I can see that. So from that standpoint, it's not surprising, but when it comes to just a consistency standpoint and how you build a franchise and like when you're building from nothing and, and you're trying to go somewhere now, now you're going to make this move and you're going to say, I agree with you. You're setting it back another two years. I, I, it, it, I don't really know what the hell's going on in Dallas, to be honest with you. That's about as nice. And, as and put it. well, my thing is like, you're setting it back two years and let's be realistic. It was already like a four or five year plan. You're pushing six, seven years now, just because like, I understand that many people are going to call me a hypocrite about what I'm going to say and what I just passed said, but like, I understand if, if you're bringing Agler on to have some consistency and bridge the gap from, you know, turbulent, inconsistent waters to this new young roster, Brian Agler is an established head coach in this league who can get you some consistency and build these young players into professionals who, you know, are going to do the little things to, you know, take that next leap. And then you say, okay, Agler, we've had you for a few years now, maybe like three more years down the road. You helped us grow to this point. But for us to get to this next step, we're going to need that new coach, to let that new blood, whatever it is. Like, I get it. There's certain growth processes that teams go through um, similar to, you know, the Chicago sky. Now, we've talked about this prolifically. Do I think Amber Stock should have gotten more time Yes. Do I think that she did a good job in her time of building that team that we see now that James Wade is able to take to further levels? Yes. And I do think there is somewhat of a science to that of saying like, this coach might not be the coach unless everything falls our way, but this coach might not be the coach who brings us to the championship caliber, but this is a coach who's going to put us on the doorstep where that next coach can take us there. For me, my biggest question is kind of for you, Rachel, what is it? What does that do to young players who their first year in the season, the first season in the league, is with one coach, and now, like in my mind, it's almost setting them back to a rookie season because they're gonna have to completely learn everything over new as far as the style of play that this coach is gonna want. Well, I mean, it's and and that that covers the entire Dallas Wings roster, right? Because they've owned basically each draft, and and we're talking about Arike all the way down to this last draft class. I mean, it's and that's going to be a big change. And that I, I, I wouldn't, I, I don't know for sure. This is not a bomb by any stretch, but this has got to be kind of a blow um, to the morale in some degree, because, you know, you, you, as a player, you, you get used to a certain system. You've grown in a certain system. Arike has grown and with the ball in her hands and being able to be coached the way she's been coached under Agler her entire WNBA career these last two years. And now what does that look like? You know, it's a huge question mark. So it does and that has to be established. That has to be built. So then you turn your head to, all right, well, they're professionals, right? Coaching changes happen. It's part of the deal. Okay, they'll be fine. But at the end of the day, it is a lot of change um, for a lot of young players. So yeah, I mean, that's a great point that you brought up there. But then it's like, okay, well, who are we going to bring in? You just had one of the most experienced coaches in the history of the WBA, probably the most experienced co- coach um, alongside with Reeve. You know, you just parted ways. So now like what, 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 what direction are you going to go? Are you going to go the former player route? Well, that's gonna, that's the trend now. That's the thing that everybody is doing. And that's great because you've got experience and players who've actually, or coaches who've actually done it, but there comes a learning curve with that as well. I don't know, man. Like I, I don't know what direction they go and, or, or what some of these tops top names are. I've had a few people ask me, I personally don't have 
<laughs> any names. It's I'm 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 more kind of on the fence of just listening to hear what everyone else has to say about it. But um, not to go off too far on a tangent, I, I don't know what direction they're going to go with this. But I would have to anticipate it's going to be a former player of some degree. Well, speaking of that, let's get this quote that uh, was in the AP article from Doug Feinberg. It's a quote from Greg Bibb. At the end of the day, we'll hire the candidate that best qualified is best qualified to lead our team. As far as relatability, the best way is to find a coach who has walked in the same shoes that the players have walked in. So I think that pretty much closed book on that. We're looking at, at a former player. Obviously, there's Crystal Robinson. There's Noel Quinn. There's, you know, Rebecca Brunson, uh, there's Katie Smith, there's a plethora of players, former players who are assistant coaches in the league. Now, uh, for me, after reading that quote, it simplifies it to two, if not three, main streams of category. You can go the LA Sparks route, which I think is the wild card route, picking a former NBA player or random player. Um, No offense, Derek Fisher. Uh, the other route is a player who recently retired or has retired and has been assistant coaching for a period of time, or a player who recently retired and doesn't have much experience coaching. I think the problem here is, obviously in everyone's mind, when you hire a new coach, you can bring on somebody who is going to completely reshape the team, right? So, like, you're going to pick, let's say Sue Bird comes into it, or Sue Bird retires after the season, and they hire Sue Bird. Sue Bird takes over. And she's this amazing coach that's able to take this team from a not playoff team to a championship contender in one offseason. Unlikely, but fine. Let's let's hypothetical this one. That realistically isn't going to happen. And if that does happen, that's a great sign for this team. But my question is kind of like, you have, like we said two years, right, Rachel? You're setting yourself back two years. Now you're you're saying you need to take someone who doesn't have the experience of building a team or the experience of coaching. They're in their rookie season of coaching also to a degree. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, or or you know, a, a couple of years under their belt as an assistant, um, which in my mm-hmm. mind makes sense for sure. Um, I mean, it. You know, you're already like you said, three or four years from being able to maybe even be considered a contender. This this move is a couple years, at least a year, we'll say best case scenario a year. So now you're looking at, you know, five years away. It's just, I don't know, man, unless there's something going on behind the scene and we don't need to like get into anything or speculate or whatever. I, it, it, in my mind, the only thing that justifies this for me as an outsider looking in is that they're just, they were on two different pages. You know, the, the way Agler envisioned running his team um, versus the way the ownership or GM saw this going was just too, just not anywhere near um, the same, mm-hmm. the same place. And and that's the only thing that makes sense for a move like this, where you just mutually agree, Hey, um, <laughs> this isn't going to work. And I think that's probably more, more than likely what this is, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit worried for the future of Dallas. Um, you know, I- well, the, the interesting thing, Rachel, is if you remember back before Agler took the job, there was, circulating rumors and i believe it was confirmed i i'm pretty sure i have it confirmed that um so excuse me if this wasn't officially confirmed but i believe on one of the i think on the podcast episode when we had coach t on here um speaking to him he talked about how eric his son eric tebow interviewed for that dallas wings job and if i remember correctly i could be wrong i could be spilling some tea on this one but i'm pretty sure he turned down the position uh that agler eventually takes so, and like, not only does that, co- my thing is more so this. If you're talking about the Dallas Wings, Greg Big can go out there and give a quote about how they're looking for a former player. I don't think that there's too many established, like, the argument always going into a coaching vacancy is, are you going to go with an established coach who's been around the block for a while, kind of the Brian Agler route, or are you going to go young to somebody, uh, you know, a former player style? They're all, it's only kind of the only option they have really is the former player style. Do I expect, you know, Gary Coppenberg to leave the Seattle storm um, to move over to the Dallas wings with all this, everything that's in flux, the crazy waves going on there. No. Do I expect Eric Tebow to do that when he's got a pretty cushy job and a situation set up in DC to take over basically when his dad's done? No, like 
at the end of the day, it boils down to this is kind of the the the, the bed that Dallas has, has made and they got to lay in it. It could have positives. I'm excited for the possibility of the positives. Let's talk about we've been very negative. Real briefly, what are some possible positives of getting a young former coach in there, Rachel, well, that you can see? No, I, I, I'm excited to, like, hopefully get – some more women in the league, you know, I, I really would think that that's something we need. And I, I think like the, the next wave, a next generation of coaches, you know, whether it's, it's assistants, um, former players, getting opportunities um, to be able to get out here and, and like start leading these teams. You know, I mean, I, I, I think Brian has been a great coach, probably really likely we'll see him with, a, with another team at some point. Um, but, you know, like, like, we have some some really um, solid coaches that have had a great deal of longevity. So I think just having kind of this new wave, right? Like like some fresh new faces, a new look to the league is going to be huge. And I'm excited what that what that means, what that brings. Um, or do you potentially have some other names that pop up here and there? I mean, we 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 talked about Amber Stock a little bit. I think Amber is a phenomenal mind when it comes to building a team. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw her in a front office somewhere. I think she's really, really good at that. Um, she would be really, really good at that. What about Pokey Chapman? I mean, you know, she's been kind of hanging out. We talked to her a few weeks ago, but, you know, she's still got some coaching into her, in her. Shameless plug. Check out that podcast. <laughs> do, we, do, we, do we see some names that have kind of been off the grid for the last year or two um, kind of pop back in? Do we see... Um, you know, some, some fresh new faces, maybe former players, um, assistant coaches get their spot. You know, change like this is exciting because, like I said, you, you, you're, you're giving an opportunity to um, just hopefully a woman in my mind. Like I said, I would love to see another woman um, be a head coach in the WNBA. I think we need some more of that. And um, Look, there's what? There's two black head coaches in the league and four women head coaches in the league. We need to change things up. I know. It's not know. a proper so it, representation. It definitely, like, when you look at the demographic of it, it's like, wow, okay. You know, this is <clears throat> this is an interesting time. But I definitely think that having a more diverse league is, is going to be healthy. It's going to be good. It's what we need. Um, but I don't know what that looks like. You know, I think that coaching hires come in trends at times. Um, and and we, you talk about that a lot at the, in the collegiate game. Um, and I think that this could go a lot of different ways. And I, I, I think it, it's going to pull a really good pool. But like you said, that was a great point about Kloppenberg, um, of Eric. You know, I, I don't know if they go for something like this. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's uh, that's a good point. Is this is the Dallas Wings organization in its current state appealing to guys like that? I don't know. Um, that's a good question. What 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 do you think? I I just don't think so. I mean, like, let's be real. Coaches, up and coming coaches. There's a reason why that New York Liberty spot was so coveted because they had that positive aspect, but because they had new ownership that was clearly putting a focus on being analytical, being forward thinking, and I, for me personally, I'm just never a fan of the ownership G like. There's a point where it's too much ownership GM um, and like you got to pick a side and that's just, that, I mean, that's just where my thought is on that. I do want to remind folks, uh, Winsider Daily is a must subscribe for your podcast needs. It's the only podcast show with Ben Dole. It's also the only podcast show that covers extensively every single WNBA game and breaks it all down. Don't forget to see our written content at winsider.com and the Winsider Network, a podcast collection of WNBA podcasts. Hit subscribe, hit like, and on patreon.com backslash winsider is where you can subscribe, get advance notice of the merch we're selling, get get it before the public does, and help us so we can continue to bring you uh, the coverage that you like. I want to wrap up the episode on this one final thought. Do we think, how? I guess... How many seasons, let's take, let's do this betting-wise, how many seasons do we think it will take for the Dallas Wings to have a better record than this past season of 8 and 14? I think, I mean, I think they can do it next year. You know, I, I definitely see, regardless of who the coach is, Dallas should be a playoff team next year, in my mind. 
um, the way they've played and, and then the projection that I see, like they might be that eighth spot, seventh or eighth spot. Um, but, but if this franchise is going to move forward and you're going to make a move like this with your coaching change, I mean, you, you better like, I, I don't know. I guess I really, I see it happening next year. And if they don't make the playoffs next year, man, I think there's a, a big problem. Well, yeah. And I, I think that's a, a huge part of it also is just kind of like, and we've been touching on this all episode, but do, are they going to make a commitment to a coach? I remember when we had Nikki Collin on yeah. uh, when she first got, got picked or hired to uh, be the Atlanta dream head coach. And I said to her like, okay, what is it? A two year plan, a three year plan, a five year plan. Like, what do you say to win these, these owners over and give you your spot? And she was like, realistically, most of the time it's a two season contract when you're the head coach for the first time. And then you can get like a multi-year extension, blah, blah, blah. So I think it's kind of hard. It, for me, if I want to instill confidence in my team, I'm signing this coach for multiple years because I want to say, like, this is our person who's going to take us from where we are now for the next foreseeable future. It can't just be another situation of we're going to hire someone for two years. That's not going to work. I think it depends on the roster. It depends on the, the current state of the team. You know, D- mm-hmm. Nagler clearly in two years, the, the, the record is not imp- very overwhelming at all, but very underwhelming is what I'm trying to say. But if you step back and you know the whole landscape of what has gone on these last couple of years, then you realize that the Dallas Wings weren't actually operating from a starting point until they probably right before this season because of all the change of losing franchise players of Liz Cambage and St- Skylar Diggins and just this massive turnover we had, we've had to see with, with, especially in that first year headed into that second year. Then you finally get to the point where it's like, okay, now we can build something and you start to build a little bit and then you take the coach away. So I think you have to, you, it, 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 it depends you know, it depends. The, the, the Dallas Agler needed more than two years to do something with this team because of how everything went down. Uh, well, and that, that's the thing I think a lot of people, and I'll kind of finish my thoughts on this with this, like that's something that I feel often most people don't recognize. Uh, like a lot of people look at teams and go, oh, well, you had two years. How come you couldn't turn around? Perfect. It takes time to turn the culture and the players and the system. Like it takes time. It's not just, especially with the WNBA season with a short, uh, a short training camp, you know, th- this isn't college basketball where, you know, you spend, and you can talk this much better than I can, but you spend so much time building a system and a style that you can just bring people in. This is a team that's completely rebuilding everything. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about it just being a rebuild every year. It's just, it's like a revolving door, you know, and, and we just say the same thing every time we talk about the Dallas Wings. Well, it's a rebuild. Well, it's a rebuild. Well, it's a rebuild. Well, now they've got a new coach. It's, there's a lot of question marks with that. It's just the same thing. There's, there has been no consistency at all. Um, and so I, 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 I don't fault Agler at all for the record or how they've performed the last two years. I, I was excited to see what he could do with this team in the next couple of years. But does that mean that someone else can't come in and do it? No, not at all, of course. Um, I think it'll be interesting who that person is. Um, and, and well, and that's the thing too, I feel like is, is more so we're not sitting here go, getting all like the next coach is going to be horrible and, and this team isn't going to turn around. It's much more like we're excited to see who it's going to be. I think, but I, I think this Dallas team is talented. Obviously there's a lot of young players. Um, I hope none of them want to leave and I hope there's no – you know, a a ton of drama, like we've seen the last few years in terms of people just wanting out. That's a huge part of this, (laughs) um, in terms of the consistency part, but yeah, I mean, obviously this is a really, really talented team that is led by Arike, who's, you know, led the league in scoring. I mean, she's incredible and and she's going to be soon an MVP of the league. It's just a matter of when. So you've got to get the right person in there who can connect with this team. Um, get them to play the way they need to play, but at the same time knows how to win, win games in a very competitive WNBA league. So um, we're just going to have to see. Yeah. Hey, for less than a cup of coffee a month, you can directly show support for the hard work we do covering the W. Patreon.com backslash Winsider. Join the family. Trust me, it's worth it. We'll be back with a new podcast episode a little bit later in the off season. We also have some exciting news. We're going to be having on some guests. We're going to be talking about WNBA overseas, breaking down Euro League and Euro and uh, Euro Cup, and all the variety of the national leagues. 
Make sure to tune in, hit subscribe, so the Windsiders show on your favorite podcast app.